In this video, I'm going to talk about double displacement reaction. Double displacement reaction is happening between two aqueous solutions for ionic compounds. Let's say we have two ionic compounds like AB and CD, and we would like to predict what is the product for them and how we can find out which one is producing solid and precipitate in the reaction and which one is not. Let's say A is cation and B is anion, C cation and D is anion. To predict the product, we should switch the cations and write the product between A and D and also write the product between B and C. So our product should be AD plus BC. But how we should know if the products are soluble in water and they are aqueous or if they are producing solid, we should refer to the solubility chart. Let's have some example for this type of reaction. Here for first example, you can see the silver nitrate solution in the test tube and I'm adding sodium chloride solution and you can see a white solid is producing. So let's see how we can write the chemical equation for this reaction. So we have silver nitrate, aqueous, and we have sodium chloride, also aqueous. For writing the product, we should write the product between silver and chloride and nitrate and sodium. Because all of them, they have same charge, so writing the formula for ionic product are simple. So our product will be AgCl and sodium nitrate. Let's see which one is solid, that white solid, and which one is soluble in water. So if we take a look to the solubility chart, we can see that for chloride ion, all of them, they are soluble except silver, mercury, and lead. So HCl is going to be insoluble and it forms a solid during this reaction. But sodium nitrate, it's soluble regarding to the solubility chart. So this is the equation and it's already balanced. We call this one molecular equation. When ionic compound dissolve in water, they dissociate it to the cation and anion. So actually in the solution of silver nitrate, we have silver cation and we have nitrate anion. Same for sodium chloride, sodium and chloride. For writing the product, we should know that AgCl is solid and we don't write them as an ionic part because AgCl doesn't dissolve in water, so it cannot dissociate it to their ion. So we leave AgCl as a solid, but sodium nitrate, it's AQ solution, so we can write it as a separate ions. This equation, it is complete ionic equation. But as you can see here, there are some ions on the left side and right side of the equation. They don't have any direct role in the reaction. This type of ions, we call them a spectator ion, and we can cancel them out. So the remaining equation is just silver cation, chloride, and its product is silver chloride. This equation is net ionic equation and it is the actual reaction happening by mixing of these two solutions. For second example, we have lead to nitrate in the test tube and I'm adding potassium iodide to this solution. And you can see a yellow solid form during these reactions. Let's write the equation. So there is lead to nitrate and we add potassium iodide we would like to write the product and find out which one is the yellow solid and then write the ionic equation and net ionic equation so we know the nitrate ion it has negative one charge so when we have two nitrate the total charge for anions are negative two so basically we have two negative for two nitrate so lead should be too positive to neutralize the ionic compound. So the charge for lead is positive two. Potassium is belong to group one and its charge always is positive one and iodide is always negative one. 
So let's write the product for lead and iodide and nitrate and potassium. For writing the product for lead and iodide, we should make sure that we write the correct formula. Lead has positive 2 and iodide has negative 1. When we crisscross the charge, the formula for lead iodide will be PbI2. So here is our first product, PbI2, lead iodide. And for second product, we have potassium and we have nitrate. Both of them, they have 1. So when we cross them, actual formula doesn't show any subscript. So here we have potassium nitrate. For next step, we should make sure the equation is balanced. We have two iodide here, so we should put two for potassium iodide. Also, we should put two here to make balance for potassium and also for nitrate. Regarding the solubility table, we can see that iodide is not soluble for lead, mercury, and silver. So lead iodide is valid in this equation. But nitrate anion always has a soluble compound no matter what is the cation. So here we have aqueous. So this is complete molecular equation. For writing the ionic one, so first step here we have lead. So lead is positive two. Then we have nitrate, but there are two of nitrate. So all of this subscript is going to be coefficient when we change the equation to the ionic form. So two nitrate. Then for potassium iodide, there is a coefficient. So we have two of potassium and two of iodide. For writing the product, because lead iodide is solid, we don't write it as an ionic form. Then for potassium nitrate, we have two potassium here and two nitrate. As we can see here, potassium and nitrate, they are a spectator ion and we can cancel them out. And the net ionic equation is lead positive 2, 2 of iodide, it produces lead iodide solid. All of the ions in the complete ionic equation, they should be aqueous. I just make it simpler and didn't write it here. So this is our net equations for second example. Here for third example, in the test tube, we have copper 2 sulfate and I'm adding the sodium phosphate solution. And you can see a blue solid is forming during this mixing. Let's write the complete equation, then ionic and net ionic equation for this reaction. So in the test tube, we have copper 2 sulfate and we add sodium phosphate. Sulfate is negative 2 always, so the copper in this equation should be positive 2. Sodium is always positive 1, but we have 3 of them, so the charge for all 3 sodium is positive 3, so phosphate should be negative 3. To predict in the product, we should write the product for copper and phosphate and for sulfate and sodium. Copper is positive 2 and phosphate is negative 3. For writing the formula for copper and phosphate, we should cross down the charge and copper subscript will be 3 and subscript for phosphate will be 2, but we should put phosphate in parentheses because this 2 is belong to the whole PO4. So here is our product, copper phosphate. And the second one is between sodium and sulfate. Again, we need to cross it. So then sodium has two and sulfate has one. Then the next product will be Na2SO4. Let's see which one is soluble, which one is not. The cations for group one, they are always soluble. But we can take a look at the solubility chart. Phosphate anion most of the time is insoluble except for ammonium and alkali metals. Alkali metal is means group one. So copper is not for group one of periodic table. So copper phosphate will be insoluble. So copper phosphate will be solid and sodium sulfate will be aqueous. Then we should make sure this equation is balanced. And we can see that it is not because on the right side we have three copper and on the left side we have only one. So I should put three as a coefficient for copper here. Then when we have three of copper sulfate 
On the right side, I should have three sulfate. Right now, copper is balanced, but sodium is not. Sodium on the right side, there is six, three times two. And on the left side, there is only three. So we should put coefficient two here. And right now, the equation is balanced. So now we can move to the ionic equation. So there are three copper cation here and three sulfate. Here for sodium, we have two times three, six sodium, and also two times one phosphate, there are two phosphate. For product, we just leave copper phosphate because it's solid. And for sodium sulfate, there are six sodium and three sulfate. So this is the complete ionic equation. And we can see that sodium and sulfate are a spectator ions. So the net ionic equation is reaction of three copper cations and two phosphate anion to produce copper two phosphate. And this is our net ionic equation. And here for the last example, we would like to write the equation for reaction between sodium chloride solution and potassium sulfate. We would like to predict the product, write ionic equation and net ionic equation. So we should write the product between sodium and sulfate and between chloride and potassium. We know the charge for sodium is positive one and charge for sulfate is negative two. So by cross them, the formula will be Na2SO4. So we have sodium sulfate. Also for potassium and chloride, we know that potassium is positive one and Cl is negative one. So the formula is KCl. We know that the group one element, they are always soluble. So both of these compounds, they are aqueous. For next step, we need to make sure the reaction is balanced. So we have two potassium here. Here we have one on the right side. So I should put two as a coefficient for KCl. On the right side, we have two sodium. On the left side, we have one. So I should put a coefficient also for sodium chloride. Then we can move to the ionic equation. There are two sodium and two chloride. Here we have two potassium and one sulfate. On the right side, we have two sodium and one sulfate, and we have two potassium and two chloride. Because we don't have solid product, all of the products are in the ionic form too. By looking to this equation, we can see all of these ions are as spectators. So the net equation, it is no reaction. By mixing these two solutions, sodium chloride and potassium sulfate, nothing happening. It is just a physical mixing. There is no reaction. Because when we have product and reactant as a soluble compound, there is just a mixture of ions in the solution. Nothing really happened between the cations and anions. Thank you for watching this video. For watching more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.